You are tuned into the new Old Heads podcast, premiered every Thursday at noon at bringingdowntheband.com and brought to you by No Bad Ideas, Coleman Dental, Printfinity, and Indie CD and Vinyl. Support the new Old Heads by visiting our Patreon at patreon.com slash newoldheads. Episode 132 of the New Old Heads podcast. I am Major 7th. I'm your favorite rapper's producer. Ask him, he'll tell you. Longevity is directly in front of me. How are you, sir? I'm doing all right, Mike. How are you? Uh, don't get it twisted. I'm, I'm your favorite rapper's producer. Am I? Yeah. Okay. You know, I'm not mad ra- at that. I mean, Anybody that has a favorite rapper out there, I'm you. their favorite producer. Okay. Yeah, okay. I'm in my bag right now. Oh, okay. All don't right. get that out there. I'm with that, it. That's yeah. what it is. Yeah. Let them know. Uh, <laughs> in the corner is always fresh to death. Rocking the Spider-Man joint. You know, we were just talking about adventures prior to coming on. DJ J. Diff. Salutations, What's sir. What's good, sir? I'm good, man. Did you peep the, the Spider-Man trailer? I did. What you hey, think? Hey, the spoiler effect has officially been lifted. So if you yes. have not seen Avengers, that is on you. I yeah. think the Spider-Man is going to be lit, low-key. I'm, I'm really excited about uh, where they take it and also uh, post-credit. Because, yeah. you know, it starts uh, phase four. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So for all the nerds out there, it starts phase four. So I'm excited. We'll I see hope what happens. answer some questions as, Facts, as well. Facts, 100%. Yeah. Shout out to Endgame. We didn't get any bread off of it, but pretty good movie. To my well, one of my, my favorite <laughs> died, actually, in that game. That, I that feel movie. you. I feel you. But since the spoilers lift, we might be able to talk about that a little later on. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Because yeah, it's we'll out see. there now. If we can fit it in. Uh, to my immediate left. Tony Stark died. Stop, man. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Again, Lone is that cousin, as I always say, that you cannot take anywhere. One hundred percent. Did he that come back? Lone we is don't know. Co- Lone is definitely that cousin. You is there a multiverse? We don't hey. know. Hey, no. it's a possibility. Lone is definitely that cousin. We can't take the anywhere. The search for more money. The vo- <laughs> the last. Hey, gonna get it. <laughs> that voice that you just heard, Tamati, immediate left sitting in for DJ Spools. Shout out to Spools. We see you. Uh, don't do that. Uh, Kansas City Mac. A.K.A. Jay Moore, the voice of Indianapolis. How are you, sir? I'm doing well. Doing well. Wouldn't it be Jay Moore, A.K.A. Kansas City Mac? Not, not in my world. It's the opposite. In the multiverse. <laughs> in the multiverse, he's Kansas City Mac first. What about St. Louis, though? Nah. I mean, I do have. He it. knows where I'm going with Kansas City Mac, though. He knows my reference point, so he's Kansas so City Mac. The uh, the wavy light skin girls don't be loving me no more. You know what, man? They do. How do you feel a certain type of way about that now? Since hey, you didn't say. Thank it? you. Yeah. Thank you. I mean, look. If I'm gonna go ahead and have the moniker, let me go ahead and get it. <laughs> shout out to all the wavy, <laughs> shout out to all the wavy light skin girls that really do love Jay Moore. We see y'all out in the clubs, requesting. Uh, you know, suspect music and stuff mm-hmm. like that. We still love y'all, though. And shout out to all the girls who are like, hey, can you play the City Girls? You know, yeah. Like, yeah, we'll play it. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. Stand around if y'all, if y'all need a point of reference, just go to his Instagram page. One of them will pop up. So that's where we see the point of reference for, you know, how well he's doing or if he's struggling. That's we actually we gave the, uh, a group of ladies that City Girls join at the end of a Wine After Work, which Word. obviously does not fit the format of Wine After Work. <laughs> at all. At all. Look, but we I, did it. Yeah. I uh, I got a, it, uh, a few people who had words for me because I said all women under the age of 29, black women specifically, mm. stand around the club looking disappointed until Don't we do play that. a City Girl song or a song with Cardi B on the second verse. Man. Man. <laughs> That's tough. Hey, Cardi, not Cardi B, but she she might be able to be included in this too. Yeah. But City Girl's music is for girls that are still thotting. <laughs> oh, they still out in them streets. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They they still think they got the Aquafina flow and wow wet wet you, you know yeah, okay. yeah. they also like uh, Megan Thee Stallion and, and light skin Keisha oh uh, yeah it's a new I I, call, I like to call it, actually I did not coin this term it was a couple years ago on okay. Love and Hip Hop yeah uh, Jermaine Dupri there was one of the trash artists that was trying to make music uh, he called what her music was stripper fight music wow and at one point I was like yeah that's funny because this is music that doesn't work but now. Stripper fight music is really the sound going to be the sound of the summer 2019. Ain't so that shout, some shit. Shout out to stripper fight music 2019. Bang bang. Hey, Cardi Down B bell. is definitely uh. making it, uh, you know, okay for strippers to be out here <laughs> pursuing their dreams. That's why so I actually would, Eve started that. Did Eve start Eve, that? Eve was not. Eve, could Eve was rap, not stripper though. fight music. She could she actually rap, rap, but she's the first like. You can't rap and strip. 
I don't know, baby. Cardi B. She just happened to have. She just happened to do that. That's not what her music was. Yeah, that's yeah. True. She's not. She wasn't really out there like that that's in terms fair. of promoting the stripper life. She was just yeah. out there rapping. Yeah. Is there something wrong with the stripper life? Hey, man, don't try to point me in the put me in a corner. No, that's, that's not wrong with stripper life. We just no talked about coleslaw last last episode. This is it, all valid question. It is, but I'm just saying. I, I mean, vouch long, for as long as you ain't like Diamond's little cousin. Okay. In the club. Hey, she was out there bad. She was out there bad. She had no guidance. We lost long. He don't know who Diamond's little cousin hey, is. Hey, hey, make the money. Should don't I? let the money make you. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Hey, yo, low-key St. Louis was real scary uh, in that movie. Yeah. Yeah. You never saw him. You know what I'm saying? So. Make me feel better. <laughs> hey, but Diamond, Diamond's little cousin was out there bad. Yeah. Like, she really was trying to set an example for her, and she just... You know, gravitated towards. Isn't the that messed life. up when your uh, older cousin, who's a stripper, cannot set a good example that's for tough. the younger cousin who's trying to strip? That's yeah. tough. Not, yeah, that's tough. Thing is, like, this is that movie's twenty years old now. Yeah. yeah. Shout, rest in peace to Bernie Mac. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Bernie Mac. Shout to Bernie huge Mac. part in that movie. Players Ice Club. Ice Cube. Why you always call Lone now when you think he don't know about it? Because I know he's never seen it. I've known Lone longer than everybody in this room. He's never seen that movie before. Nope. Never. See? The movie we're referring to, for those of you who have not seen <laughs> Never it, in is, my life. Uh, Ice Cube's directorial debut. Yes. The Players Club. Yes. We've been clubbing. He's never seen also that before. Also, the film debut of a one um, Lisa Ray. Yes, yeah. sir. I, you know what? I met her when I was working in radio. I was on a flight with her as well. And you know, there are people who, uh, you know, they just look good on TV. Oh, yeah. Did, you get, uh, did you get her no. autograph? I, I saw her, though. She looks no, as like, advertised. She's, uh, she's, <laughs> she's a freakishly. Uh, beautiful woman, very yeah. nice too. Because yeah. you know, I was just part time radio DJ, and she was kind enough to say hello and and have a little conversation with me. So shout to Lisa Ray, she was really cool when I met her. Hey, met Lisa Ray on a flight from uh, Atlanta back to Indianapolis. Met her, so you had a conversation. I well, it was brief. I said, "Hey, how you doing?" Mm-hmm. She was like, "Hello." I was like, "I'm a huge fan. <laughs> great job." <laughs> Great job! Did you you did a great like job that? in uh, Players were you, Club. Were you, were you like? I'm Hello. paraphrasing, Jay Moore. Don't do that. I'm paraphrasing, but she's very, that? very cool. She's yeah. very cool, and she looks exactly like she looks. One hundred percent. So it's yeah. not a conversation, man. I'm sorry. Red August <laughs> is in the building as well. Uh, he, we've given him a microphone. Uh, Lord knows how that's going to go, but we'll see what happens. So far, so good. We're when like they, 10 shows in now. It's definitely not 10 <laughs> shows. <laughs> I knew you was going to say a number like that. It's definitely not 10 shows. But, yeah, moral of the story These is Lisa Ray is fine in person. That's, yeah. that's a fact. You like a- her, you like her more than Anna Wise? All right, so let's go ahead and get into the rundown here. <laughs> uh, shout out to the sponsors, Coleman Dental, 317-255-8546. Bringing down the band, as always, is the hub, Indy CD and Vinyl. We appreciate their partnership as well. Print Printfinity, make sure you support your local uh, businesses. They have some great artists that they're going to roll out yeah. a little later on. <laughs> Can't wait till they uh, get that spring, that summer gear out. It's going to be dope. Yeah. But uh, did I miss anybody? I got all. Oh, no bad ideas as well. Now this, this is one I would like to. You know, if we don't do it for a raffle or anything, I definitely like this one here. I got my. No, eyes you can't on this have one. that hat. I'm sorry. I can't have this you, one. All right. Have, don't you have enough it's cool. hats? I do, but this one is dope though. This is this is they always give us dope product, but this one stood out to me in the last batch that we got. So shout out to No Bad Ideas. They have been taking care of us ever since down. we started. Uh great partnership as well. And I'm not gonna take it. Hundred and thirty two episodes. Yes, they have always showed us love. So shout out to No Bad Ideas. Uh they are doing some big things and internationally known. So so salute to them. All right, so episode one thirty two. Let's jump into the rundown. So, and this is via uh, Hip Hop Wired. I saw this come along my ta- my timeline for uh, Facebook. Uh, so, Louis Farrakhan, the minister, the honorable Mr. Louis Farrakhan, as well as Alex Jones. Alex Jones has got it really. You know, know. Sexual organs. There you yeah, go. Yeah, appreciate you long. He, you know, he's he's real OC with the political commentary. You know what I'm saying? He uh, went viral and pretty much cut his own, carved his own lane in terms of that commentary for politics. Uh, but those were just two names of the people that were actually banned from Facebook. Yeah, Milo as well. Yeah, was it Milo as well? And I don't know who Milo is, so that's why I wanted. I was going to throw it to yeah. Jay Moore because I, I'm sleep on. Once you get past Alex Jones and Farrakhan, I'm sleep. Infowars. Infowars. 
Well, okay. that no, Infowars is Alex Jones. Is that yeah. Alex okay. Jones? Okay. Milo is another. I want to call him right wing, but he's just kind of all over the place. Yeah, he's uh, as far as I his ideology, but you know. So as I understand it, the it's the majority of right wing people. And then they just threw Farrakhan in there. Is well, that fair they, to say? Think of from far right and far left. As okay. The same thing. Okay. Right. Okay. So Milo and Alex Jones would, I guess, be considered. Milo's definitely far right. Okay. Alex Jones is really kind of all over the place too. Really. I mean, because he's had. I've I've seen, you know, Professor Griff <laughs> on Shout uh, Professor uh, Griff on, yes. on uh, Infowars speaking yeah. to Alex Jones. So I certainly wouldn't consider. That's anything. what I mean. Yeah. He's, he's so, probably. But, but he's know, very extreme, I guess know, is a good word. One of the things that he's most known co- on a controversial level for is how he uh, basically said that the uh, shootings, it was uh, not Parkland. Uh, There's so many the shootings place in the talk east. About. Yeah, it's so bad. There's so many mass shootings. I can't remember. It's the elementary time. school. Yeah, it was, it was right before Christmas, and he said that that was a hoax. A hoax. And the thing is. Oh, yeah? There are. What shooting was that? I can't remember the name, and we've. I had it. It's sad that we've covered so many. Sandy Hook. Sandy Hook. Sandy Hook. Hook. Yeah. Thank you. To that though, and I'm going to bring this up really quick. Mm -hmm. That that that's what he got kind of known, famous for. But he was on the Joe Rogan podcast recently, and he actually addressed that. And uh, he was saying on there that he actually never. He was posing the question. He wasn't necessarily saying that was true. Got you. Okay. So. It but, was interesting watching that to yeah. hear him actually be able to defend himself. But unfortunately, um, and, and I, I guess this is where they're coming from. But at the same time, I still don't think it's a valid thing to do. Uh, you know, there are people who, uh, who lost their children in Sandy Hook. They've had to move yeah. and change their phone numbers because yeah. there are people who believe that they are part of some conspiracy to yeah. where the government yeah. can come in and take all of our guns. Yeah. yeah. Um, the piece with Farrakhan, I think, is also very interesting because you know. When they try, the, see the thing is with Alex Jones, this is something they did to him. I think on Twitter, uh, more than a year ago, and uh, uh, and I have to, you know, and I, I thought this, but I remember seeing somebody who has a much larger uh, platform than me and who's controversial to some, but speaks truth to power to others. Uh, Tariq Nasheed, yeah, he actually mm-hmm. said they're going to use this as an excuse to take other people's platforms and say, well. They're speaking in a way that makes a certain segment of the population uncomfortable. So we feel comfortable saying they don't have the right to have a platform. Right. And a year later, here it is. They decide that Louis Farrakhan and uh, is is not someone that that deserves to have a Instagram or Facebook page. Now, um, one of the things that I don't think that they really took into account was the support that Louis Farrakhan has all over the world from not just black people and not yeah. just Muslims, you yeah. know, uh, actually, well, I, you know, I got to shout this out, you know, cause you know, when I see something and it's, it's, it's worth shouting out. Um, I, we're all familiar with M80. Yeah. Uh, who is, uh, you know, it's not, you know, I'm not talking tech tell tales out of school or anything. He's a, he's a Jewish American who's involved yeah. in hip hop. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He talked. He talked. He he did a very eloquent post about how he went to Savior's Day, and sat and listened to Louis Farrakhan, and how it, he felt all of this was wrong. And how can you speak about how the minister encourages hate? Because it's like that's not what I heard when I went to Savior's Day. And like I said, I think they misunderstood his message and who he speaks to and the support that he has. Because if anything, I've seen more videos of Louis Farrakhan on, on Instagram in the last week or so than I've ever seen. Right. Yeah. And the thing, and the thing I wanted to point out and I'm coming to you, uh, J Diff is, um, <clears throat> as it relates to the minister, I saw a lot of people on my timeline that I've witnessed or acknowledged that, you know, have never really spoken to or even posted anything about, Mr. Farrakhan, and all of a sudden I see people, um, you know, talking about his freedom of speech. For some reason, freedom of speech was trending and blah, blah, blah. It was, it was all over my uh, timeline. But I wanted to come to J-Dip to see what you thought Nobody as well cares. to kind of uh, – thank you uh, – to, to piggyback <laughs> off piggy, piggyback off what you were saying, what it, uh, Jay Moore was saying in terms of just the concept of freedom of speech because I made a post where I said, okay, if we're going to play the freedom of speech angle – uh, if you do say something, I have the right to say that I think that shit is stupid, 
right? Like that's freedom of speech. And I see people that are getting mad because you know they get emotional and they talk about responses, but you can't have it both ways, right? Right. So Jay Moore, what, I mean, not Jay Moore, but uh, Jay Div, what is your take in terms of the just the concept of that that freedom of speech and them trying to uh, basically just take Minister Farrakhan just out the game in terms of his right to be able to uh, post and and say his thoughts. Well, part of that is because he identifies as Muslim. Keyword yes. being Muslim. Yep. Even though he's a he's a black Muslim, being a Muslim in America is a scary thing to people that don't know how it operates. Um, and without knowing what he's actually doing, they think he's spewing hate hate speech or whatnot, which isn't the case. But as far as freedom of speech goes. Freedom of speech is a sli- slippery slope. Yeah. Because it can go either which way. Yes. Now everybody everybody has the opportunity to say whatever they want to say, but they never said that that doesn't come with repercussions. Right. And I think that's what people misinterpret when they when when you speak about uh freedom of speech. You can say whatever you want to say, but you saying what you want to say may lead to other things. Mm-hmm. You know Agreed. what I'm saying? Agreed. So it, it's not just uh, I can get out here and say whatever and I'm in the free and clear because I have that freedom of speech, you know? Yeah. I, that, I, that's I, how I, I feel that. about that. Yeah, I can dig that. I, I agree with that 100%. Shout out to uh, Snoop as well. Snoop was very, very vocal in terms of them as it relates to – Mr. Farrakhan. Mm-hmm. Snoop was very, very vocal about Russell Simmons, my son. Yeah, Mus- uh, you know, Russell Simmons, my son as a well. A lot of different voices who were like, "Hey, you got this." Well, the hard thing is, shout out to them for that yeah. because, because they, they, they didn't, didn't have, have to, to do yeah. that. There and you go. and they the they thing is, it puts you in the crosshairs of certain people if yep. you speak on up on behalf of Minister Farrakhan. Mm-hmm. You know, just because he's quote unquote a controversial figure. But you know, even the people who are listening to us now is like, why are they taking up for Farrakhan? And I don't right. see I'm not I'm not taking up for Farrakhan as much as I am taking up for free speech. There you go. You know, I do because the thing is, okay, um the same way just like we talked about in, in when we talked about Charlottesville a long time ago. Yeah. They had the right to, you know, be out there with the tiki torches and whatnot. But they uh, also had to understand that people had the right to counter protest. Right. Yeah. You know, because the thing is, freedom of speech doesn't mean anything if the only speech that you think is okay are people that you agree with or people who are saying, hey, you know what's great? Puppies and sunshine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Who's going to disagree with that? So, right. how do you guys feel about the overall? So, not to call anybody a hypocrite, but how do you feel overall about the ban of certain figures on social media? Such as, aside from, I, I'll be honest, I, I don't really know a lot about Farrakhan. I, I haven't, I haven't seen a, a speech on him. That's cool. I'm yeah, not sure where cool. he comes from. Yeah. It, you know, um, outside of seeing what I've seen in the headlines and social yeah. media and people popping yeah. up, you know. Right. Um, but do you feel the same way about Alex Jones and about Milo? Because you you mentioned a thing about, you know, uh, M80 and he didn't see hate. The thing is, is that a lot of people that follow some of these other people also don't see hate as well. Yeah. Well, that's where that's I, a good I, point. That's that's, a good that's point. where I come in to say, like, just because free speech doesn't mean anything if we only have the happy and the fun time speech. It's like I didn't like when they took Alex Jones's platform off of Twitter. He gets the right to be crazy and say what he wants because the thing is, next week they'll be like, okay, well. Those guys, the new old heads, they they made fun of Ham and Milk Boy. Maybe we should let <laughs> right. them have a platform. Shout out to Ham um, and Milk Boy. You know, I, at one point they had taken Willie D off of uh, uh, YouTube. Yeah. Because of some. So where does it stop? Because it, it it's not about. There's no way to really regulate that. Yeah. No. It, That's it, the it, point. It, if you start That's taking the people off, there's no way to really regulate it. So. Exactly. Because then it, it, start, it starts with someone we feel is extreme, but then. Someone will hear, you know, a conversation maybe we had about Donald Trump, and say, you know what, I think those guys are extreme as well. I think J. Div hit the. I think J. Div's point about the repercussions is the is is a great point because no matter what your whatever, no matter what you think about it, 
Well, that's you the equalizer. That's, that's the equal- what I'm saying. Like, that's I think equalizer. that's, to me, that's the dopest part is like, yo, understand that when you do go out here and jump off the deep end or whatever you think or whatever you feel, there will be people that may be opposed to that and that comes with it. I see people that are more like, uh, you talked about, when you were talking about, uh, to Jay Moore, you talking about Farrakhan. You weren't that familiar. I'm seeing people on social media that are like, yo, if you're thinking that, if you're pro or going out to speak against uh, Farrakhan being marginalized and being taken from Facebook, then you automatically are just supporting Muslims and Farrakhan. No, me, it's not that. Let me ask this, because um, people that aren't familiar with Farrakhan don't realize he actually put together a march, which was called the Million Man March. Yeah. 20 some odd years ago, they unified the black male all together in Washington, D.C., Yep, which was a nonviolent rally. I I personally have not heard him say anything negative towards another race, creed or color in any of the sermons or anything that I've, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying, heard I, or I anything like I would agree. Like that. I would agree. Um, is that same energy being brought to like a David Duke who's run, run for different offices and things like that? Is he still able to use a platform such as Facebook and Instagram in order to get his word across? Good point. Well, is it's a fair question. Is Donald Trump still able to use right. his yeah. platform? And the thing is, I don't want this is the thing. I think Alex Jones should have his platform. I think Milo should have his. I think Donald yeah. Trump should have his. Yeah. I think Louis Farrakhan should have his. I think I, I I'm not for being selective and saying this person is not now, they still have a voice but saying yeah. these this person's voice that's not worthy of Instagram right you know and and it's and it's an arbitrary um decision made by someone in an ivory tower you know I don't understand that it's it you know it it can be is there a level is there a point yeah where that, is it okay did you I mean that's the question I legitimately have is there a point like what what is the line because right right now on Twitter it's death threats essentially yeah, mm. that's and and the thing is okay if if that if they have an established community guideline, and they say this person uh, violated an established community guideline based on the guideline that is Twitter, right. okay. Right. But if it's just someone saying, well, uh, a lo- enough people disagree with this guy, right. we should take him off. Yeah, you know, it's kind of like a. Uh, there's uh, nothing. There's nothing good about that. Yeah. Yeah, I and and as far as I That's see with point. Instagram and and this you know Facebook, which is the same company essentially, absolutely, uh, which is what a that's lot why of people they're both don't. Shit. Like, which is dropped, why a lot of people don't realize. Right there, the low you know? key, he dropped the jewel. Well, that's why uh, Instagram has been going to shit yeah. in the yeah. last. Six you have months. to realize he dropped too, the jewel yeah. right there. Go you ahead, have to Jay realize there. too that politically, whose hands are in the cookie jar of Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or whatnot? Yeah, because obviously they have a say on what's going on sure. on these platforms. Sure. Um, without these social media platforms, because I know be- when we were all in high school, those didn't exist. At all. Right. So in order for us to to gain the knowledge or even uh, be interested in the things that these particular type of individuals are talking about, we had to actually read books, yep. watch news. It you know, wasn't instant. Like that. It wasn't instant. No, it wasn't to, an instant. Go to C-SPAN. Thing. Watch. First time I saw Louis Farrakhan, I, I saw him on Phil Donahue. Yeah. Yeah. So that very much giving away my age by saying I saw him on Phil Donahue. But yeah. That so that, that what, interview is still available on YouTube. So though. for all of us yeah. that don't that aren't too familiar, what what is he what's he most aligned with in general? Unfortunately, you know, um one of the things they, they pin on him is his uh his dislike of his supposed, you know, quote unquote dislike of uh Jewish people. But at the same time, you know, I've seen him hug rabbis and sit down and have, you know, and and smile and laugh with rabbis and Christian ministers. And it's also a thing where they say he hates white people. But at the same time, I've seen him, you know, sit down and have uh, dialogue and, and smile and shake hands with white people. But it's also, it's just... So does Trump. You know, as far as that's that, concerned, that's, but, but at the same time, I see, I see, you know, we, we yeah, see. that's, and that's a valid point if we're going to play yeah. devil's advocate, you know, not so the devil he, he's, he's, he kinda, good, he's very good at that. So does he have the perception in general of uh, something similar to what the Black Panthers had in the very, sense? There, there's a, to me, there's a very, um, uh, you guys can correct me if I'm wrong, but to me, there's a very, militant vibe that is associated with 
uh, Minister Farrakhan by default. Like, I mean, to it's me, just the way the nation of Islam how operates. they move, right? How right. they move, right? Right. Yeah, and it is it's generally even his uh, the fruits of Islam per yep. se. Yep. They're not like heavily armed. Oh no, and things no. like that. I'll just I'll just be again, just to be clear. Uh, the fruit of Islam don't carry weapons at right. all. They're they're just power in numbers. These are the same these are the same guys that offer to um I guess I don't want to say protect but assist when Nipsey's procession was going when it got to the point where it was getting close to right. Crenshaw and Slauson, all you saw was the Muslim brothers outside right beside his hearse. Mm-hmm. Like they were there to offset everybody else because everybody started coming closer and all that. That's there's no um, weapons or anything involved with that. Like, no, those I'll, guys I'll, just offered to do that. Being in their presence before, you know, uh, uh, I know for a fact like they don't carry weapons, right. but they also you see them in the suits and the bow ties. They do not play. So I, are, I, I wasn't even going with the weapons in the Black Panthers. That's but, not a no, no, no. But that. I'm no, just but, saying it in general how they operate. Right, right. Is, is not something that that um, is highly. Uh, weaponized. No, it's say. it's it's a thing because when you, you know, like I said, this Donahue interview is very well being circulated as of late. You know, the uh, white people in the audience when they would you know uh, ask him questions, they would say, "Well, I'm just in fear of the violence." Right. And if you know about the nation, that you know what can can you really tie? And like I'm I'm speaking to our audience, and, and you know, just people who listen, you can't tie. You know anything that Louis Farrakhan has done to any type of violence? No, that's a fact. You know, there's no record of that. You know, but just in his support of black people, mm-hmm. that's seen as I see violent to, the, for lack of a better term, the dominant society. It's a, it's it's a perception, like but that's the same idea with Black Panthers, though. Really, see, with the exactly. Black Panthers, the whole thing was they were made to police their own. Community, the community, right, and whatnot, right? And they op, they uh, pretty much operated in the right to bear arms. Yeah, and they were moving as a unit, and that was scary. But yeah. I, I guess what I'm speaking on is the perception from the white people. Yeah, because right, you know what I mean. Some white people is, still say that Black Panthers were a hate group, and that's right, right. They, right. they like to liken the Black right. Panthers to the Ku Klux Klan. There you right. go. But there the thing go. is, it, it it's 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 been a constant conversation. But when you are pro black in this country. You're automatically perceived as anti-white. Yeah, for sure. Right, you know, right. but Black Panthers actually started the WIC program. Yeah, when you right. talk about the you know yep. free breakfast and whatnot. But unfortunately, in this country, if you are anti-black, let's just be honest, there is a history of violence right. with it that is attached to anti-blackness. Mm-hmm. I want I want to jump into I want to transition into music. Uh, good topic there. We you know we I don't want to run over too much in terms of that, but. Uh, everybody definitely dropped jewels on that and I think it's dope that you said in terms of our listeners like th- hopefully this will make people go see the Donahue interview maybe go take a look at that and kind of see and there are newer interviews like I yeah, said but that's that, from the I 80s. know the one you're talking about it's, but it's classic though because there was some confrontation there and you know the audience was really engaging Minister Farrakhan so hopefully uh, we can inspire our listeners to really go do their research and take a look at those but I want to go ahead and make sure we get we cover a lot of things that we have in terms of our run now. So let's jump into some music. Shout out to Memphis, North Memphis, South Memphis. Um, where we Orange Mound. Orange Mound. Uh, county seat and all yeah. unincorporated unco- areas. Bill Street, we see. Bill Shout out to Philly. Mm-hmm. Loan apologizes as well. Um, let's, go <laughs> <laughs> let's go ahead and jump into a little I music. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> He didn't say that, y'all. Let's jump into a little music. The infamous. The infamous. Um, so there was a mural that has been defaced multiple times, but this time in particular is rather corny. It's in Connecticut. A uh, young lady, she sprayed across a, a dope. It was actually a dope uh, Nipsey Hur- the Hustle mural. Uh, and the the sad part about it is there's a, a young lady that's standing next to her that's saying, don't spray his face. Don't spray his face. Yeah, that, that whole situation and, was done. And then there's two people that are oh, uh, in the background that you can see that are just standing there watching this lady act like a like a fool and just spray over and tag. Shouting out her uh, Instagram yeah, and social like, media handle. This is what I'm going to say about that, man. Get in your bag, just, man, because to me this is just... It's, it's just short and simple. Yeah. It's, um, talk to me. To And... I don't know. Today's day and age of 
spectators when bullshit is happening. Yes, sir. Are on some other shit. Bro. Yes, sir. It's yes, like, sir. why would you allow that to happen? Yes, you, sir. You're talking about don't spray over his face. Stop her from doing it. Yeah. Anybody that says don't spray over his face is the <clears throat> ultimate cornball because you're enabling the foolishness to continue. Yeah, and then the people that are standing stupid. there as well, like all the other cornballs. Everybody. Not, not only is that whack, but the Marathon, Marathon store, Nipsey store, Crenshaw and Slauson, um, they've had overwhelming amounts of orders as well in terms of the product. So it's really, really been overwhelming to the store. But to add to insult in terms of the foolishness that we're talking about, there have been food trucks that have pulled up. People are selling bootleg Nipsey T-shirts. And people are actually paying bread to get tours of the area surrounding Crenshaw and Slauson. And this this has all been driven by the Marathon store that's on the corner. Like, to me... That's so corny. It's like, unfortunate, but it's nothing new. It's though. nothing new. I mean, Ice Cube but it's corny, was though. rapping about that in the 1990s with Put them on this game. week's Put T-shirt on game. Well, quote of the month, which you can't touch it's this on yes, the sir. front. On the yes, front. Sir. I mean, yes, sir. that ain't nothing new. You know, It's just, it's just corny, man though, in. man, because I guess it's just history. It's just history repeating itself. But, you know, we think about Nip. Maybe it's just a connection that we have or I have in terms of him, and it's, maybe it's fresh, but the concept is not new. But it's still corny. It's going to continue to happen. I mean, with everything that goes on in America, yeah, it gets bootlegged. It doesn't matter what it is. Mm-hmm. Uh, the president winning the election, whether black or white, yeah, there's going to be bootleg items for that. Uh, he's a he's a important figure that we lost. There's going to be bootleg items. Simple yeah. as that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Uh, of course, the uh, marathon store is going to do well off of it. Yeah. But at the same time, other people are going to capitalize on it as well. It's unfortunate, but it's an unfortunate truth. There's nothing you'll ever be able to do to counteract that shit. Tim Moore, jump yeah. in real quick because I, I got another quick hit before we get to our main topic. Anything you have to say about that? Well, you know, um, as foolish as that was with the mural situation, yeah. you know, there was a level. I, you know, I got to accentuate the positive because there were local artists in that community who came out and restored the mural. Yes. Mm-hmm. You know, so. That's dope. You know, when there's luckily there are people who care more about culture than they do clout. Yes. And came out and actually restored that mural. And so it's back to, you know, and that young lady, I don't know if they ever caught her. Yeah. You know, but unfortunately, and, and the person that was like, why didn't you go tackle that girl who had the spray yeah. can? But, you know, that's, I don't want to encourage violence in any way, shape, or form. I'm with you. Um, as far as, but once again, people chasing culture instead of clout. That's what happens when you have food trucks outside of the marathon store and people selling bootleg stuff because they would never come to those neighborhoods. There we go. But now it's like yeah. part of the Hollywood Star Tours. There like, hey, go. there goes Nipsey's store. There we go. You know, I mean, um, who does it? Who's it benefiting? That's 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 the, that's question. the question that the I'm interested in. The people who give the tour and the people who are willing to make the bootleg yes. T-shirts. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's kind of like that that girl that went to Marcy, and everybody that visits New York, for mm-hmm. some reason, goes and stands in front of the Marcy sign, the Marcy Project sign, yeah. or the people yeah. who used to go and stand in front of the Welcome to Compton sign. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 She was Harlem shaking in front of it to the uh, Show me what you got. Yeah, man. yeah. All that bullshit. That's cool. I mean, that's that's cornball. What, shit. what people don't realize is this is real life. Yep. To, to certain people, one hundred percent. This is not a mockery. It's not a. Uh, it's not entertainment. This is everyday life. Yeah. So you showing up to get a tour and want to, you know what I'm saying? It's 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 different if you actually had genuine love and you wanted to kind right. of pay homage that way. But right. You know what I'm saying? You know, I, I almost wouldn't if I went to California. I almost wouldn't want to go to the marathon just because I'm like I don't want to be that person that stands out in front of the store and takes a selfie. Well, you just don't got to take a picture of it. Yeah, Everything yeah. Just go be. visit, break bread, cop something, and, and get you know, on the body so, there. Yeah. yeah, and that's that's the new thing with what social media has done. Yeah, it's like we can't even enjoy life anymore. Yeah, without documenting every piece of it. Yeah, some of the best memories are the memories that. That you don't have a picture of. Shout out oh, to yeah. Boosie. Boosie actually went out to uh, that area. He, you know, he took a photo next to a Nipsey mural and actually went out and cop. Like I saw him in a video. Well, where of he course had, he's going to do that because yeah. again, it goes to the social media thing. But the thing is, what I'm saying is, we need to get away from that. Everything needs to be shown on social media. Look what I did. 
It's I either got, you got genuine love and you do it out of the love and you move on. Like, I might hit loan up. Yeah, I just left the store, but it's not all over social media. I guess the devil. I guess the devil's advocate in me would be would be to, for me would be to say, how how would you say that those people that are doing that aren't genuine? That would be my well, question. Well, I can't I really say that, but what happens is it gets lost in translation. Okay, right. because you have the people that had genuine love for them doing it, and then you have the people that just want to get likes and so we don't know what's real. Okay, things I like follow. that. Okay. Well, I think That's part fair. of it also is because now we feel like we have more hard drive space on our phones than we do in our in our heads. Uh, yeah. you know, um, That's I remember a bar right there. I went to when I remember when to go see uh, Jay Z a few years ago. Yeah, uh, at the United Center for the I think it was Magna Carta Holy Grail tour. Great show. And I remember taking video, and I'm, I was like, who am I going to show this to? So I just put my phone away for the rest of the show. As you should. You know, and, and but the thing is, when you go to shows now, like, um, you know, if, if an artist is taking footage and he's he's looking at a, a, a sea of yeah lights. Cell phones. Cell well, phone not lights. lighters. Or, like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, maybe that's, yeah. maybe that's just a difference in the generations. But, like. You know, now, because I'm out a lot, and I see it's almost like people don't feel like they're having a good time unless it's documented. This video is dope, by the way. Shout out to Nipsey, man. Rest in peace. Let's let's get you another quick hit real quick. Justin Bieber oh, okay. says, yeah, we, we ain't care about you on this one. Uh, He's got age. But I, will, <laughs> but I will come to just I will come to you on this Justin Bieber topic. I don't care about uh, that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to I'm just going to jack yeah, the I'm entire coming, subject. I'm coming directly to you on this Justin Bieber joint. Uh, Who's Justin Bieber? <laughs> so Justin, <laughs> Justin Bieber says. Who's Justin Bieber? He uh, sings, dances and stuff. Oh. Caucasian male. Um, oh, so you should know him. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So Justin Bieber says. <laughs> I see you. Justin Bieber says that we should give Chris Brown his flowers. And while he's still living, he is a comparison. He beats actually, women. Don't do that. <laughs> see? Red August, get your boy. Uh he uh <laughs> who's he comparing him Stop, to? Stop, man. I'm gonna give you the names. He he said he, he's a comparison or a, a cross between Michael Jackson and Tupac. Michael Jackson because of obviously great performer. No, there is no dancing. obviously. He he doesn't Oh, he's a great performer and dancer. I ain't gonna hold you. He's a great performer I'll and give dancer. Him that. Yeah, I ain't mm-hmm. gonna hold you. He's cold at that. I'm not gonna hold you. He's cold. But they said Michael Jackson and Tupac. I'm sorry. Why Tupac? Well, you know, How? Crit- because he has tattoos. Yeah, they say he's tough out here in these streets. <laughs> blood related, you know, talking about. But uh, fake blood related. But <laughs> number hey. one, I don't even know who Justin Bieber is. So <laughs> uh, why you make it so hard, man? <laughs> why, he that why, one dude that Ursher put on. There you go. Oh, he's yeah. the one that went down to ATL. Stop from man. Canada. No, he man. groomed him down there. Yeah, actually, that's, that's actually a true story. Yeah. So um, that's what happened. I know a little bit. Where Chris? Where Chris Brown from? Who knows? Who cares? It's not so from Tallahatchie. Virginia. He is not from Tallahassee. He's from Virginia. Tallahatchie is what it's called. He's from Virginia. He's from, Virginia. He's from Tallahatchie, Virginia. Yeah, that's what it's called. Okay. All right. So yeah. give Chris Brown his flowers while he can still smell him. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I want to talk to you as a man in your face. <laughs> yeah, that'd number be good one. To hit that button right there. Number one. Uh, <laughs> Justin Bieber doesn't need to be talking about this anyways. <laughs> he can he shouldn't be giving anybody flowers. No, well, he can give everybody flowers. <laughs> uh, I, d- who cares? Who cares? Not here giving dudes who cares? flowers. No, I'm just oh, but, but the number one boy, man. <laughs> Snapchat flowers over it. But the, 100%. No, the number one person is Chris Brown. Yes. Why? Out, out of everybody, Chris Brown is the guy. Hey, talented man, he just misguided. I, I, I understand the comparison. I, I, look, but I, it's, he it's lost a me in the two part. He, lo- he lost me in the two box piece. Let, let, me let me finish. Let me finish. He doesn't really know. Yeah, let, okay. let, let's, let's, let me finish here. Go ahead, man. All right, so this is no hate to Chris Brown because people are allowed to grow. Yes. And so he's had his problems in his past. Yeah. And um, that's fine. Hopefully that he's he's taking the steps towards uh, working on himself. Yes, in those sir. Areas. Yes, sir. Um. From Justin Bieber's standpoint, one, <laughs> I understand the idea of being able to give somebody their flowers. Yes. Sure, Chris Brown is a great performer. He apparently, is. he makes good music as well. That's what I hear. I hate that you use apparently. <laughs> Go ahead, man. Um, but to compare him, <laughs> but to compare him to like Tupac and, and Michael Jackson and Michael Jackson, two people that are dead, that are legends. Yep. Um, I don't know. It rubs me wrong just because I, one, I think initially. 
why are you saying this? First of all, the and Michael, two, what type of clout are you trying to gain from saying this? The Michael so. Jackson comparison, he doesn't have the he doesn't have the catalog. Let's go ahead and throw that out there. Does not have the catalog. Entertainment standpoint, controversy, blah blah blah. Musically, he does not have the catalog. Y'all see me out there? He does not have the catalog. J. Diff, jump in. He was on the right track. Okay, to you're become honest. Thank you, sir. The next Michael Jack- Jackson right. type figure. But the episode happened with Rihanna. Yep. Amongst uh, other things yep. that he's done. But that's the only the only reason why he's saying Tupac is because he stays in the news for Tell me about the Tupac. For some other shit. Okay. That's that's the only reason that he can compare can compare Tupac to him. And people love comparing Tupac to everybody. Is that a fair comparison? No. no. Oh right, at least he's you're he's not. This is why he's not a no, fair comparison. That's ignorant. I hate him. Go ahead, man. <laughs> What's the name? Chris Brown is not in the same arena as far as being politically aware and yes. conscious, socially conscious of what's going on out here. One hundred percent. Regardless of what Tupac was doing, yeah, and what he was in the news for, yes, sir. He had a good head on his shoulders. 100%. He knew what the hell was going on, and he spoke about it very religiously and empathetically as far as, you know what I'm saying, community and, and things that's going on and the reason why we do this. Like he had that one uh, interview where he's talking about if, uh, like we're asking, we start out asking, mm-hmm. and then once yep. we're done asking, now we're we're, we're getting banging a little on more. The door. We're banging we're on the door, the door. and then we're soaring. busting I mean, through the TV, door. Yep. You know what I'm saying? You've never heard Chris Brown give an interview like that. No, not there, at all. he doesn't have those moments in his career where he had stand out. I mean, Tupac even had standout moments and speeches at the Black Expo here in Indiana. Yep, there's a video for it. There is. Yep. So the only re- the only comparison is that he's rah rah and he's been in the news. Jay Moore, I need you to wrap this up real quick because we got one more topic we want to talk okay, about. Okay, I'll uh, get to put that. a bow on this. Real well, this quick is the crazy me. thing, like. Chris Brown has had an incredible run musically since Deuces. He had a he had a hiccup like his right out. He put out an album right after the Rihanna thing. Yes, where he's talking about he was a transformer. Wasn't nobody feeling that shit. Nah. But like once he got past that <laughs> album cycle and he got Deuces yeah. from Deuces to now to um, Undecided. Yeah, he's probably had one of the best runs in hip hop where there's been no hiccups. He's supposed to be that's two thousand ten. R&B 2009 yeah. to, or 2010 The Shawnee to, sample joint is called yeah. Don't know the record you know, I don't that, know the that's name the, of that's, it That's undecided I love you Undecided smell. That, and No I know, the, I know the sample But what I'm saying is That, yes, that joint That joint is cold You know That joint is cold Deuces New things uh, uh, Fine China, China Fine China is a joint I wish I'm, I produced You Fine know un- what's, what's unfortunate is Because he has this glaring mark Where he uh, hit Rihanna, and I don't care about the the, the lead up to it, yep. uh, you know, because there's 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 of course there's conversation about wh- how that started. Yep. Don't really care. You got as a man, you got to be in much better control. Um, Facts. But if you take, he was you know, a young man though. But I'm not he was a young man. The, the only yeah. th- I'm not making excuses for him. But the thing is, like I always say, I don't want anyone to be defined by their worst moment, and so. I look at it like this: Who, How many women did he hit before? Yep. How many women has he hit since? Yep. Tupac you, went to jail for rape. Yeah, he did. Do you know? Yeah, um, but that was in question, though, right? Yeah, well, it was in question. It was in question. When you look at it, because re- he actually he didn't go to jail for rape. Let's clear that that's up. That's true. That's true. He went to jail for basically unlawful touching of the buttocks. There we go. There we go. Okay, they put him in. But this is why when I talk to young men, unfortunately, like. That's a, that was enough for them to send him to Rikers Island. Yeah. So when I, you know, when I get to do get an opportunity to talk to young men, I said, because unfortunately, this is just another conversation we can get into, but yeah, we'll do that later. But I said, look, you have to. It, the responsibility is on you to 100%. be a right person yeah. when you're out here dealing with. Don't leave anything to interpretation. Mm-hmm. You know, because that was un- touching a girl's behind when she did. She claims in court she didn't want you to touch her. That was enough for them to give Tup- Tupac time in hard. He, he also had real shot two off-duty 
um, cops. Police officers. But he didn't go to jail for that. Right, he didn't. Yeah. So he that was payback. To, oh, yeah. Don't get me I wrong. You, His see. last name being Shakur yeah, was I enough exactly. for them. To, but, you know, let's, let's, I'll, we'll talk about that. We'll, but on Chris Brown, he can't be compared to Tupac because Tupac's legacy is not, honestly, the music isn't the biggest piece. It started before he was even born. The legacy yeah. of of why, like I I I like Tupac's music, but like sometimes when I go back and watch his interviews, that's really what makes him a legend. One hundred percent. But you know, because I I when we spoke about Nipsey during his that's untime, the Nipsey comparison. Like I I like Nipsey's music, but like when I go back and listen to the things he had to say and who he was as a person, that's what makes him a legend. Mm-hmm. I, you know what's crazy? I see multiple people, um, whether it be via Vlad interviews or you know just OGs from out west. Uh, there was one guy. I think it was. I think his. It says his name was OG Big Cass. Used to rap with. Uh, oh, I can't remember the group that he used to rap with. But he said it's laughable to compare Nipsey to Tupac for the simple fact that Nipsey actually was like the advanced version. Like he he went ahead and just advanced on the design. To Lupe's point, shout to Lupe. Did you improve on the design? Like. He really advanced the design, the design of what Tupac was trying to do, only because he's older, twenty six to thirty three. Thirty three. Mm-hmm. So that's a he's lifetime, like, though. He's like, yo, I don't even see why people compare them because it's like Nipsey was so far advanced from what he did. You can say that, but at the same time, look at the look at this has nothing to do with it, but it sure. is a comparison. Sure. Gobots and Transformers. Gobots came first. Yep. Transformers were after, but they superseded the GoBots. They did, they you know did. What I'm and it's it's just it's all in timing. Sure. And it's also what sub- you do at that time. It's also mm-hmm. subjective. Like th- these are just opinions, but um, you know it. It's just tough. It's, it's weird when you think about it because that guy is just he was just very very important to the culture. And also, it was Justin Bieber who said it. Who yeah, <laughs> shout out to Long. Let's just get back to that. It was Justin Bieber. It was who Justin said Bieber. It. I want. What I do want... you really know about Tupac, Justin, <laughs> other than the songs that come on the, 100%. the hot one hundred? He definitely doesn't know about or, Tupac. Uh, T-shirt yeah. from what's that store in the mall where they sell out a? Oh, uh, uh, hot Jazz. topic. Hot topic. <laughs> hot yeah. topic. Yeah, he's a hot topic Tupac. Yeah, shout fan. out to Justin yeah. Bieber being a hot topic guy. And also, real quick, shouts to Mick Jenkins in this video. We're watching consensual seduction. That's on his latest project. Speaking Say it on again? Spe- what, consensual seduction, so, yeah, okay. which so, speaks on Jay Moore's point. So, about and, and I think we we, we need to uh, have Mick a Jenkins conversation about you know the culture and back and forth between men and women and rape culture. But we need to make sure that we have uh, a young lady who wants to come and talk about one hundred percent. I think that's one thing that we've we're kind of overdue for. So we'll 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 have that conversation again. Soon. Shout out to Ben Jenkins, though he's a dope artist from the shot, uh, puts out consistent product, but. Let's jump into music before we get out of here. Uh, let's talk about Logic, right? Okay. So Logic. What he say? Yeah, Logic. <laughs> <laughs> Logic been in the news low key for multiple things. Like he had a joint with Eminem. Homicide, I believe is the name of it. Where yeah. it's just a lot of fast rapping, a lot of bars. Eminem verse was cold. I ain't gonna lie. Logic's was cool too. Logic yeah. was cold too, but Eminem really got busy. Also, it's not for everybody, so I get it. Right, but people that like white rappers rapping really fast will really enjoy this. Speaking of you, uh, speaking of white rappers, <laughs> did you say speaking of you? Yeah, no. I, 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 I jumped ahead right there, Jay Moore. Sorry about that. Speaking of white rappers, I'm a walking uh, contradiction. <laughs> uh, logic, metaphorical, <laughs> lyrical. Logic spherical. got busy, man, and you know it's it's one of those things where we know Eminem is an acquired taste. Like everybody's not gonna want to jump. You know what I'm saying? Jump to listen to Eminem. If you do go by the numbers, he's really a, more of a fast food taste. And not, not to take anything taste? away from him. Just just going off how many fans Say, okay, and okay. sales and things him. he yeah. has. Yeah. Okay. But he uh you know, he's had success. He moved them units. Definitely. At the end of the day. He moved yeah. those units. Nobody who buys his who buys his music? Yeah. <laughs> don't do that. M Pimp People who don't, us. There you go. I like People that. who don't buy any other raps. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Now, nah, but the joint, the joint, they got busy. Like I said, but I could see from a sonic, from sonically, I could see why people would be like, "Yo, this is for a specific, you know, group of people." I don't know. I didn't hate it. I didn't hate it to be honest. I didn't hate it either. I thought I thought they both did their thing for what no it was. question. But no question. But I told J Diff. J Diff told me, I think it was you that fought me on this concept. But I said, and I stand by it. I think if Logic was 
um, who did I say? Did I say Boosie or Webby? Yeah, you said if he looked like Boosie. Yeah, if he was Boosie's we, complexion, I think people would champion him more. I think he gets, I think he gets the corny mixed kid. But that's bias. not even. It's not even, it's not even, it's not even yeah. possible, though. Because, How is it not possible? Because, because his that's enti- all I hear. Because oh, he's a corny mix guy. But because his, his skill en- is undeniable. Because his entire repertoire of music is about him being mixed. Yeah. <laughs> No, but I'm talking about his skill as an actual the, the rapper. Thing, the thing with Logic is, you're missing. He mimics. He's everything a very that he raps is not about his race. No, let's a get that out. That's what I'm saying. Of everything that he raps is not about his race. He mimics. What he did, he took. For starters, his his best album is Good Kid, Mad City Part, Part Two. two. <laughs> his best album. I see. I see. I see. He's very good at rapping. Yes, but he's good. He mimics these other artists. Okay. He started tapping into that whole on mix phase Mm -hmm. early. Start being more beneficial to him as far as getting out there. Like when he was doing the uh, the young Sinatra shit, the early stuff. Okay. He would dibble dabble in it, Mm -hmm. but now that he's gotten more praise, more acclimate, and things like that, he does do that a lot. But he he might go ahead because he did that. He does it less now than what he used to. Mm. Mm-hmm. Okay. I don't know okay. that. The, that uh, what's his last album? The one with the, all the Wu Tang. The Wu Tang. Was it the one? Not that one. The was that the one oh, with the right. that had the same similar cover to what Freddie Gibbs had? The one that had all the people on the cover. There's an album. There's yeah, an album that in one. between that one though. The Freddie Gibbs joint. The comparable Freddie Gibbs joint. There's another album that came after that. Yes. Well, the one that's where the he, one Lone's talking about. I'm talking about the one where he had he was sitting like in the middle, and then uh, the robot that he uses was in there. They was playing chess or something. That's the one that came after the Freddie Gibbs around the place. Yeah. Yep. He touched on it a whole lot on that album. That album front to back was I'm mixed. I'm black. I'm um, from uh, black people. My my relatives may have been slave, that type shit. I mean, okay, so you think that's trash when his dad is I'm black. not saying that is trash. No, okay. that's I'm not what I said I'm at just, all. I'm just, I'm just playing devil's advocate. He, he's, he's tapping off of what people want to hear from me. Okay, okay. We don't necessarily okay. have to G for that shit. 100%. You know what I'm saying? We okay. have our own likes and things as far as that goes as far as hip hop is concerned. But right. he's a very good rapper. He just, at the end of the day, in my opinion, he mimics Yes. Great MC. Jump in, Lone. I'm sorry. Sorry. I was doing something else. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I'd, I'd agree. That's that's my one thing about Logic, and I've been yeah. saying this for years. You have. That, you have. Very consistent that on this I think, point. I think he's extremely talented, but at the same time, like he always sounds like somebody else. Mm. And to my point to what you were saying is like, I don't think that it, if his complexion was changed, it would matter for the simple fact that he it would completely change his subject matter. On a lot of what his music was. Okay. Um, but at the same time, maybe his subject matter would change based upon that. It so, might. I mean, yeah, I, that's know, what I'm saying. Yeah, it might. But he actually probably has more fans now because he looks like he can be white. Exactly. Ah, I think okay, that as well, okay, too. I mean, he okay. is mixed, but he is extremely light. He's very light. Nice. Yeah, I, I so, agree. I agree. Well, because I saw in the reaction because he has this whole thing about how he doesn't he wants to stop having to clear samples and replaying everything. We'll get there. And, and here's and, a quote, Jay Moore, and I'm coming right back to you. But uh-huh. he said, "I'm tired of replaying shit." This is what he said. He said, uh, I, "I still wanted to talk about logic, but that's okay." <laughs> this is, this still, is still, about logic. Logic. still about logic. No, I wanted to stay on the other one. But oh, it's sorry. Oh, we it's can all go back, he said, you know, "Fuck the right. money." Sorry. Right. This is why ahead. we did mixtapes. This is why mixtapes were so good. All right. Well, no, do what you want, Lone. No, 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 the thing I, I <laughs> want to say, you know, because you said if you in the pre-production we were talking about how if he looked like Boosie, he'd yeah. just be. I said if he looked like Boosie, that he would just be another rapidy rap rap rapper, and people wouldn't pay as much attention to him. Oh no! Even man. if he had the same skill level of rap, and it's like, oh, another black kid who knows how to rap, mm. you know. But he has this whole um, uh, tragic uh, mulatto story that he likes to rap about. <laughs> I'm not, and that's not, you know, maybe that, okay. Yeah, that's I, funny. I'm just saying. Um, and 
I'm kind of more alive. There are a lot of people who can. That's probably incorrect. I, I should uh, check myself. You caught that though. I see. You. Okay. I see you in the but, corner. I see. You. you know, I I read a lot of old books. <laughs> <laughs> I see these terms. Flo- you kind of floated around. <laughs> he said, "I read a lot of old." It's books. all good. <laughs> he decided to say, "Yeah," he, in him being an octoroon and a quadroon. I could. I could. Now, really if you read new books, that'd be different. Yeah, but the um, old books, we excuse him for. <laughs> wow. yeah, yeah, no, I no. And, and so I shout I, out the old books. Yeah, watch out for the old books and the terminology. <laughs> It'll get you in a little bit of trouble. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean like so with his skill level yeah. and if he was, you know, a little bit darker skin, maybe both his parents were black, uh it wouldn't he, he he wouldn't have the attention that he has now. Like there are a lot of people who didn't find out he was black until he rapped about it and even then they're like I was What's one of he really people. talking about? I was you one know, of those people. It's like people I who I saw uh they did a, a wax figure of uh the rock. Yeah. And they made him white. And everybody's like, you know, neither of his parents are white, but like somehow he's reached a level of acceptance in the culture that that they just kind of made him white. Because J. Cole is in the exact same boat as a logic. So is Drake. Yeah, definitely. But when you look at a J. Cole, it doesn't look the same as looking at a logic. It does 100%. I agree. It's because he's banking off of it almost. I agree. Yeah. You know, like he he articulates it, right. but it might also be because he looks more white. Mm-hmm. He does potentially, so maybe yeah. he feels like he so has it, to it, say it more often. It feels weird when he says "nigga" when you look at Logic. Yeah, that that's is, not. And a, he made it. A point to, he made it a, a point to say it on, came uh, on, on this yeah. on this one, yeah. which yeah. Is and it, it didn't. On. It almost didn't even fit when he yeah. said it. It's it almost felt wrong. Like, actually. I'm just gonna say it just because I can say it. Yeah, you pointed that out. That's pretty sure an observation. Lone laughed hysterically, but Jada, if you're right, that's a good that's a good observation. Yeah. The song isn't bad though. I, I don't hate it. My again, my only thing with with Logic is what Terry said. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's it just he seems like he he. I I don't know what Logic sounds like. Yeah, yeah. Because he sounds like everybody else. Good, it was even a kid. rapper. Uh, I think that's from here mm-hmm. that said he kind of ran with his style that that somehow got close with Logic. Oh, I can't word? remember his name. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. I'm asleep on that. Okay. Yeah. So we don't. Uh. So the sample clearance thing. Yes, he talked about sample clearances and how he's tired of, uh, I'm paraphrasing here, but, you know, paying for the replays, Having to, people yeah. to come in, instrumentation. Pay the money and shut the we, fuck up. We know about that. <laughs> but <laughs> he's like, that's why mixtapes are so good. Long. So yeah. from a producer standpoint, how do you feel about that? Because to me, I think it's dope to have the budget to be able to do the interpolations to replay because yeah. that'll get you some bread. For sure. But he's like, I'm tired of that. I think it's what? just a lazy stance. Okay. Um, because it, what he's really advocor- advocating is copyright infringement. Mm. And uh, I mean, I understand the frustration of, because if you're around during the mixtape era, it was a cool era. Yeah. You know, like you didn't, you didn't feel like you had all these stipulations. You could do something, put it out. You could, you know, you could just do stuff. But from an artist standpoint, I actually, I actually had this argument. Or I talked about this last week with somebody. Uh, and one of the classes I talked when they asked about copyright. And I said, you know, to me, I understand the frustrations with it, but you are taking somebody else's material. Right. Mm-hmm. You're taking somebody else's beat mm-hmm. or song or sample, and you're you're using that to do what you do. Yep. And you should be responsible for that. That's that's right. the, and that's the way I feel. And I'm a producer that has sampled more than a thousand times. 100%. So it, it's just it's just part of it. Just just pay the money or uh, make something original. It, I mean, it's just weird. It's just weird for me from a production standpoint to hear someone that has the budget to be able to go play the session players to do that. Yeah. There's complain that about, you know what I mean? You like, have the money to do it. Yeah, yeah. Like I could see if it was someone that, it, that couldn't afford to get samples replayed and then they are, but it know, doesn't really cost a lot to get samples replayed. I see. You, if I you don't know people. If like, you know, if you know people, that's one thing. I'll give you that. But there are instances instances where musicians that are professional musicians may charge a fee to come in and play. You know, send a replay or do a sure. session or something like that. So, but it's not going to be like thousands. It's not going to be dollars, crazy. I, w- I, mean? I would think not. I agree. And it I should wouldn't. be given that you being a musician, right, want to put money back into another musician's pocket. That's the mm. hypocrisy of it. You know mm. what I'm saying? So. Um, yeah. And someone being built on hip hop, yeah, knows that certain elements of hip hop, the 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 structures from sampling, yeah, 
You know what I'm saying? Yeah. The Mount Rushmore of hip hop has sampling on it. One hundred percent. So why would you be upset about that? Well, he's more. I, I think his argument, though, I mean, too, for his he doesn't defense, want to pay for it. He doesn't want to pay for it. I think when he talks about the mixtape era, I mean, think back to when Mac Miller got sued. That was really the first time somebody got sued off of a mixtape, right? Mm-hmm. He, he took what Lord Finesse's beat and made a song. Yep. Thought they, that he could get away with it because because he didn't because he didn't he didn't get paid for it. Didn't get paid yeah, for they it. Came after him. But they came after him because that's one of the songs that Mac Miller got big for. Yeah. Um. So. But it, that was a cool era because you could just take beats and do stuff over it. And so but it was. If you make it in that era, then mm-hmm. you gotta pay your fines. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, yeah. I, I mean, yeah. I understand where he's coming from, but I feel, I feel like it's a weird, weird argument from Com- him. Coming from, from him, him yeah. in terms of speaking about a hassle to do that, that's where someone like Lone or myself would find it weird. Like, I don't understand why that's so weird. Yeah. Especially when you're you're dealing in a situation where you, I know you got the budget to pay for it. First of all, you know you're on Def Jam. Okay? I really don't want to hear there we go. about how this is such a struggle there we for go. you. There we you're go. still in the major label system. Yeah. And the thing is, like, you make it seem like your struggle yep. is something so unique and so new. This is something people have been going through for the past 35 years. One you know, hundred since, so is since they pulled it. Biz Marquis album, you know, because he didn't want to pay, you know, Gilbert and O'Sullivan. So, like, I don't want to hear Learn. about how... Or, you yeah. know, or when the Turtles came after De La Soul yep. for, you know, the one Facts. sample they forgot to clear off of uh, Three Foot High and Rising. Wasn't even the main sample of the song. I exactly. Right. And so, yeah. it, but, you know, they we really talk about his, Bart. maybe his light skin privilege. Yeah. Like, you still, <laughs> you, when you see people who are making, like, remarks, be like, oh, this is the privilege of yeah. having. I was like, yeah. okay, do you still not, even though he raps about being light skinned and yeah. lo- being black but looking sort of white mm-hmm. and having this mixed heritage, you're still talking about his privilege. Facts. You know, I guess because his privilege of looking sort of white where he can say these things. But he's right. still, you know, when it all comes down to it, he's still a black man in America. So, like, if you're going to make the argument, make it about the fact that he's whining <laughs> over something that's not a new problem. So you know that's what? my issue. I think that's a good place to end it. <laughs> First world shit. Yeah. 100%, 100%. I think that's a good place to end it. So we'll go ahead and end it there for episode 132. Shout out to Red August for doing what he does for us on the camera work. He really has enhanced the program. Longevity. DJ J. Diff. Did I say your name wrong? No, it was way Continue. wrong. <laughs> there he is. Red August is there. Jay Moore. J. Diff. I am Major 7. Shout out to Coleman Dental, Print Finity, Eddie CD, and Vinyl. Uh, who am I missing? No Bad Ideas and Bringing Down a Band. We will see y'all next week. Remember, patreon.com backslash new old heads. Doc, new old heads. Check us out. Yeah, we'll see y'all next week. I'm trying, man. I'm trying to press it all in and get it all in there. Man. We'll see y'all next week. It's that oil talking to you. Yeah. No, it ain't the oil. Okay. I'm just trying to rush everything in. We on the, we on the time clock. No, see y'all not, next week. No, we're not supposed to. Oh. Whatever. Peace. I'm saying that. It's our world. <laughs> <laughs>